game is still progressing From trailers to mansions, making moves so bold Turning those wheels into gold, the story never gets old You bought them low, fix them up, made them shine like new Hello and welcome to episode number two Hello everyone, Jose J. Garcia with Mobile Home Investor Confessions and Cars. You're in for another treat. I'm gonna show you my very first mobile home I ever invested in as well. So the stories I could share on that one alone, the sleepless nights, the worries, the concerns, the all what ifs ended up being a great deal and it's the beginning of what made this happen today. So welcome everyone. I hope you enjoyed episode number one. You know, we went over some of the craziness that happens and that's what this this show is about is, you know, bringing that real raw footage, unedited. We're gonna have guests, uh, investors come in here as well with me, episode number three, be on the lookout for that. And they're gonna be talking about some of the same stuff behind the scenes, the stuff people don't share. People love sharing the profits, the successes, the monies, the flows. There's a lot of things they're not telling you and we're here to share them with you. So. Let's jump in episode number two. So in today's episode, we actually decided to go with an SUV. Now I'm a fan. Well, when I think of a Ford Classics 1967 Shelby GT, Eleanor gone in 60 seconds. I was a fan, I'm a fan. Now I never got to own a 67 Shelby, never too late I suppose, but I have owned a 50 Mustang that was loud. This thing was freaking massive. It, it, they're nice, it was nice, it was loud. Neighbors hated me, stop waking up early and cranking your car, you name it. Today's episode is a little bit differently. This is an EMAC, which is all electric. So no rev, no sound. I can't, I can't show you real sound on the car because there's no sound. It's all quiet, so I went from super loud to no sound. But it's neat, it's unique for sure. It's an SUV, it's the Mustang version. From my understanding, it's not here to take over the Mustang. So don't worry guys, you fanatics out there are worried about the, oh, the Mustang car is gone, it's now an SUV. No, 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 the Mustang's gonna continue. Those things are a classic, they'll be there forever. You know, this uh, the electric is a little differently. It's not as fast. You know, top speed I understand is 114, 115 miles, so it's not meant for you to drag race by any means, but it is quick. I'll show you the speedometer here in a few minutes. We'll take it out for a stroll so you can kind of see how that works, but uh, it, it's neat. It's electric, you gotta plug it up. Uh, instead of 93 octane boost racing fuel, you get to plug up an extension cord. <laughs> Times have changed, right? Like it, I like it. Emac, you know, definitely check those out. But let's get into it right away. So, you know, worst excuses I can think about. Excuses uh, everywhere, excuses. But I would say the worst ones come from our contractors or handyman, or help, or I can do it all, they sound great. You know, I feel like I've killed more people, I've injured more people, I've sickened more people than anyone else. Because I've heard that because of working in my homes, they've gotten sick, they family members died. And I mean, some of these uh, excuses, you know, from, from our contractors is, you know, Jay, my, my grandparent passed away. I knew this one contractor who had told me the same story. You know, it, either it was true or he was making it up. But apparently he had over seven grandmas. So, you know, you go name on that. So that, that's just the way that it works. And I mean, it's somebody stole my truck last night. Okay, it's, it's, I didn't report it yet, but I think we can find it. You know, all these excuses. I will say the number one was a heart attack. Now that one, that was more early in my career, if you will. So, mm, of course, you know, calling them up you know what's going on trying to text them leave on voicemails etc nothing mr matt was gone he just was an answer and he was a legit contractor so contractor so but uh finally i got a hold of him and i really felt like he answered the phone he didn't really want to answer it kind of just happened you know accidentally picked up and uh, hey matt what's going on i haven't seen you in a couple of weeks etc jay i had a heart attack so immediately i come to stop you know i, I have a heart i care so when he said I had a heart attack, I thought, oh, I need to stop pressuring this gentleman here. I'm, I'm sitting here calling him, sending him texts and voicemails. This guy's trying to deal with his health. So I let off, no doubt. And hey, just when you get better, give me a call. Let's see what we can do. You know, if anything we can do for you, of course. So, you know, kept going, you keep moving. But uh, somewhere in there, I connected with an investor partner who knew and another investor. You know, that, that's the thing about this, uh, this unique uh, industry. Somebody knows somebody that knows somebody. So I connected with this one gentleman and he says, hey, uh, I'm glad you didn't have as much work because Matt is doing a great job for me. There it was. Matt didn't have a heart attack. Matt found somebody who paid a little bit more, was closer to home, and was willing to work with them in a time frame. I, I apparently rush contractors a little too much. Go figure. 
Yes, you better believe I'll call Matt back again. I asked him, Matt, what, what's up with this? You said he had a heart attack. I, I'm concerned. I'm worried. And it turns out you're over there working for so-and-so. Jay, I, I got better. I, I got better. So long story short on that one, we let it be. Excuses come. And yes, some of these excuses, I mean, the excuses some of these contractors were to the extent of. I mean, stolen truck. Uh, I had an accident. I had to be hospitalized. I had a heart attack. You know, those things are just part of it. You know, again, the raw that you don't hear. So, you know, we keep moving along. That, that, that's the way I see it. So <laughs> some contractors, I don't want no way. You know, they don't want to work. I don't want them to work. You know, it just kind of carries on on that. But I'll tell you what I don't want even more than that is bad tenants. And I'm not talking about people. Bad tenants. What am I referring to when I say a bad tenant? A very unwanted tenant. Not even paying to be there infestation bugs cockroaches fleas bed bugs that's the thing bed bugs Ugh, don't even want to think about that so let me tell you some of those stories a few of those little stories on, on a fleas the infestation the thing about it too is you know in these mobile homes mobile home communities and not all of them not all of them don't don't get me wrong there's some very nice people who take very well care of their homes and spotless i mean you could you could eat i wouldn't but you could eat off the floor if you want uh, it's that clean you, you get what i'm going with that uh you open the door to come in and check it out the home whether they're selling it to you buying or you know whatever roaches they all have roaches and you remember from episode number uno number one that uh every resident has a dog has a cat has a guinea pig has a real pig has a goat i mean they, they got little zoos happening in their house and these animals live inside the mobile home i'll, I'll never understand it you're sharing your your living space with animals animals go outside come back and they attract fleas a lot of them now apparently not everybody gets attacked by fleas i've walked into mobile homes with investors who they were just fine me i was getting swarm of them here's the thing about fleas when you feel bites you feel them it's too late you you look down and oh my gosh what is this it's fleas it's time to run back outside take your pants and do a song because you got the dance you got to get those things off of you so fleas i'm very attracted to fleas apparently and uh fleas are a thing i, I cannot tell you how many houses i've visited where it's fleas i mean just my goodness and people living in it that, that's just people live like that roaches you know another thing you open a cabinet door, they scram. Nighttime, you come in, you turn the light on, they scram. These are not these are not an insect to these people. These are part of the family. That's just member. That's Juan and that's Sally and that's John and that's Peter and <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking on that. Bed bugs. Bed bugs is a thing as well. Now, here's the thing about it. I traveled up north to uh, Virginia. You know those areas, those states. We're not there in those states just yet. But apparently in some of those communities, again, not all of them, okay, there is a very bad infestation of bed bugs. Yes, bed bugs. And of course, I went in and reviewed home number one, home number two, number three, and I visited a couple other ones. And they said, uh, hey, you know, there's bed bugs in this community. I didn't think that was a thing. I, I've heard of that, but bad stories, maybe Halloween time, hey, don't get, uh, don't get bit by the bed bugs that's a real thing i looked it up of course as soon as i started doing a little research i realized oh i'm cleaning myself i don't even want to take a chance of this before i go back home and attract these things apparently these things end up loving you they'll find you no matter what so yeah bad bugs is a thing so look just one more thing for you to look out for is the bad bugs okay and look every community is different every every tenant every resident's different so don't go thinking that everybody's nasty i'm not trying i'm not trying to give you the inside of oh we got trailer park you know it's back eight eight miles something you know so this, that's not what it is so you know this thing about this mustang i'm sitting here looking at it, it's it's like a giant ipod the, the radio is like a giant ipod it's got a big old button on it you know what would be neat if i could take it and pick it up like a phone it'd be a giant ipod hey i'm talking to my ipod oh, what's, what's going on you know what i mean so storage if you store not bed bugs or fleas or storage let me tell you a story about a storage now some people 
will get a storage shed, which they put beside their house, whatever, 12 by 12, whatever, little little buildings that they say, you've seen these things down the road. They sell, they finance, they'll bring them to your house. Well, a lot of people need extra storage, which is fine. Some people like to build an extra room onto the mobile home, which just becomes, in essence, storage. I've even seen some people who have an extra mobile home, an entire extra mobile home for storage. Okay, now, you know, doesn't really matter. I don't care what you store in your mobile home. That, that's your personal belongings. It's you. You do right. Whatever. Store whatever you want. Well, there was one tenant that we had. And a neighbor called us. You know, I love how the neighbors always get our numbers. You know, communities communicate. They know each other. They borrow salt, sugar, tea, Kool-Aid, whatever. They know each other. So when there's an issue, they relate, they communicate, and they get a hold of who they want. Well, this neighbor got a hold of us. She wasn't our resident. The tenant was. She got a hold of us. Uh, Jay, I, I can't take John. We'll call him John. I can't take John in his loud motorcycle in his mobile home any longer. He's up late. He's revving it up. Or I don't want to call the cops on him. Can you just please do something about it? Now, when she said that, you know, she kept saying, she kept saying, in, in. He's in his mobile home. So I asked, okay, so John is outside. He's revving his motorcycle loud. I mean, you can call the cops on him if you need to do something like that. I mean, it's, you know, I can't stop that, but we'll give him a call. She said, no, he's in his mobile home. So I asked, he's in his mobile home with his motorcycle. She said, yes, he's been in there for a while and he does this every night now. We paid John a visit. We drove out there. I want to see this creation. So it turns out that John bought himself a Harley, Harley Davidson. Good brand, by the way. Uh... And he didn't want it to stay outside. Harley was not going to get rained on. Harley was not going to sit outside. He doesn't trust the community. He this and that. So what he did was he actually built a ramp, almost like a handicap ramp on the back of the mobile home where he could drive it up and then he could cover it and it would be close to the home. Now, as time quickly passed by, John decided, well, it's still kind of getting rained on. So now he led it into the mobile home, which was the laundry room in the back. So that was his storage was he brought it up the ramp, parked it in inside the mobile home in the, in the uh in the laundry room but john likes to drink so john would get a little wild he'd enjoy i guess looking at his harley and he would start cranking it inside the mobile home can you imagine the carbon dioxide I, I actually don't don't imagine that okay terrible he would crank his motorcycle and he would sit there and just rip it up play with it so one night he decided to take it a little step further and try to drive it inside the mobile home when we got to his mobile home, uh, he obviously been doing it for a while, and he actually had burnt marks. He had been burning out inside the mobile home. I'm just thankful he didn't start a fire, carbon dioxide, you know, that sort of thing. That can be stored as well. That's not where the mo where a uh, motorcycle should be should be stored for sure. You know, not not a motorcycle. John ended up moving shortly after that. He didn't like that there were too many rules, too many regulations. I was apparently too uh, strict. You know, I'm strict because I don't want you to rev up your motorcycle so loud at night that you're waking up the neighbors. Right? You're gonna start a fire in your own mobile home. You know, and breaking into mobile homes. That's a law, by the way. Breaking into mobile homes. That's another one I can't count how many times I've broken into my own mobile homes. You know, when we buy these mobile homes, fixer uppers, handyman specials, investments, deals, name them what you want. They're ours. We've done the deal, a transaction, we've done the closing, but the majority of them many times are boarded up. They're boarded up for a reason because they want to keep up homeless people, drugs, that sort of thing out. So when we buy them, and a lot of times it's sight unseen. We know what we're buying, we know the markets, but it's like, let me go out there. And, uh, we didn't bring the right drill, we didn't bring the right tools. Uh, my, my partners came out, they didn't come prepared. So guess what? We gotta go through windows. We gotta get through doors. And there is certain ways to get into the doors without breaking the door. <laughs> Getting into. I had once upon a time where a neighbor saw me she said, I look suspicious. You look professional, but you look suspicious is, is the reason she called the law on me. So yes, I was out there walking around and while I was walking around because I was looking at the mobile home, okay, a few of the specifics, we're gonna have to rehab, touch up, whatever, just kind of looking at taking a couple pictures. Then I finally decided I gotta go in the home. I mean, you know, I've tried to, I, I've 
was hoping not to go in, but I need to go in because I need to see what's going on. My contractor's got to come out here anyway, so whatever. So sure enough, I put a bucket that I found. I cranked up the window in my home, and I started climbing in. Right about that time, I looked back and pop up. Oh, uh, there's a sheriff. I didn't shoot the sheriff. Okay. Um, of course. Sir, <laughs> please step this way. I'm being treated like I'm doing wrong. So it didn't take long. I quickly said, hey, I know what this looks like. I know what you're thinking. Some criminal trying to jump in here, but I assure you, broad daylight, my SUV sitting right here. I'm trying to get in. I'm the owner. My name is this and that and those, and he verified a couple things. He's doing his job. I don't, I don't hate him for that. Did a job, and he actually ended up laughing when I told him some of the stories. So, and I told him about fleece. So he's, he was very thankful about that because he said, you know what? I've actually visited this community, community many, many times. And it's not to find an investor. It's usually people are breaking in, that sort of thing. So all in all, we actually ended up getting information from him. We obviously wouldn't have gotten opportunities. Opportunity, treat everything like an opportunity. When people see something as a no-no, I see opportunities. So look, keep talking some more. This is what this, uh, this, ep this episode is about. I'm going to show you my very first mobile home that I ever invested. I want to show you a quick little peek of that community has changed a lot since then. I mean, it's been a beautiful investment for me. That number one led to number two, led to number three, led to many strategies, led to many connections. A lot and everything, it, goes, it all goes back to that number one, the day that I decided to take action because that's what really changed. So I'm gonna show you a quick peek on that. Uh, I'm gonna show you a quick peek on the speedometer on this thing and the fast it can go. It's all right. <laughs> We're not going to break the law. We're not going to over speed, especially not on a beautiful day like today. Uh, stay tuned for episode number three. Episode number three, we got a investor partner who also has plenty of stories he's going to share. Remember, this is a whole YouTube series that we're going to continue this going. Different car every time, different investor moving forward. This is episode number two. I hope you're enjoying it. Hit the like, hit the su subscription, su subscription on here. I'm going to learn to talk in a minute. Give me suggestions. Drop some comments. What would you like me to talk about? You know, and if you got something you want me to share, I'd be happy to. I'd love to hear your stories. You know, we got the Frank Rolf. Look him up, Frank Rolf from GMH, who is phenomenal. He has shared some stories with us. I'm gonna share. I'm gonna share his story on the next one. One story that he decided out of the blue. I called him Mr. Random right about then because he shared a story with me. I was, I was, I needed popcorn. I was baffled. I was like, tell me more. Tell me. It was crazy stuff, but it's the kind of stuff we do out here. You know every day is an experience every day is something new we love it that's why we do it and that's why i'm still involved check out home number one so here we are climbing up the hill and let's go check it out you know the community looks similar it's uh it's some upgrades i've come to but uh still similar too so mobile home number one here it is so that was it mobile home number one the one that made all this possible since then here we are now we got to get the moving we got to go